In today's video, I hope I find a way to apply a texture on the cube I created uh, some videos ago. You don't know how to create one? Link in the description. So essentially, a texture is like an image. It can be a dice, like in this case, but can also be a Minecraft block, a cat, the photo that you did uh, when you was uh, 12 and you find out recently whatever. After you have chosen your texture, you must use the UV coordinates to apply this texture to the proper 3D object. Here's how. Basically, you divide the image in a lot of little rectangles. Secondly, you divide your 3D object, that can be a cube, a sphere, a monkey, in a lot of surfaces. Take one of these surfaces. You locate the first UV coordinate of one of the rectangles on the fourth vertex of the surface. This is the easy part. Then you must take the second UV coordinate and move it to the second vertex. You are probably noticing that you can't apply just a simple translation, because otherwise the first vertex moves too. You must stretch the UV plane in order to fit the data. The stretching must also be applied to the other coordinates, until your rectangle is perfectly matched with the surface. Repeat this procedure for all the surfaces and uh, voila! But one thing is the theory, another is the practice. We are creating a texture square class that contains all the points of the cube and the texture that we want to apply. The texture will be an image that we can find on your PC thanks to a proper path. The surface will be formed by four vertices, so for selecting just one surface we select the element from 0 to 8. Here we apply also the UV coordinates for the texture, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. Every time we want to draw the texture on screen, we call the draw function. We must enable and disable the GL texture to the target, since we are applying the image on a 2D surface, link the target with the image and finally draw it. The result is pretty ridiculous, but when you program it for the first time, you will cry for happiness. If you want to move texture on screen, it's very easy. All you must do is create a function that upgrades the position of the vertex of the proper surface and ta-da! Let's move on. Now I change the image from this to this in order to complete the cube. The only things that changes are the UV coordinates. Let's call W the width of a single rectangle and H its height. You see from this example that W equal one fourth and H equal one third. If you want to draw this face, let's see point to point what are the UV coordinates you must indicate. This is W, this is H. Then uh, there is W to H, here we find 2w and 2h, and finally we conclude with 2w and h. You must repeat this procedure for all the faces until you obtain this. You are probably noticing that the surfaces change their texture pseudo-randomly. This happened because, if you remember, when I created the cube, I sorted the surfaces in order to draw them from the most far away to the screen to the closest one. So I must also sort the texture to balance this phenomena. We are close to the result, but there is still a problem. Distortion. To better understand this kind of problem, I substitute one face of the dice with a grid and I start the simulation. If you focus the attention on the center part of the grid, you surely notice this change in direction of the grid. Why this happened? The problems are two. There is not such a quadrilateral texture in OpenGL. Every time you select a quotes surface, this program divides the quadrilateral in two triangles and draws each triangle separately. This becomes visible in the grid example. The second problem is the fact that when we project the square on the screen surface, we are distorting it. For OpenGL, it's difficult to understand where our point of observation is. I think a lot 
how can I solve this problem? And after some days, I find a solution. I don't need to solve the problem. <laughs> if you don't understand, well, that's okay. I will try to do my best to explain you. I divide each surface in smaller pieces in base on a parameter that I call the tails. This subdivision doesn't prevent the distortion to happen, but if the number of subdivision is great enough, the half the top distortion is so small that it becomes negligible. After few corrections, we obtain this. I hope you enjoyed this video, see you on next tutorial.